I tell it anyway because it's my son and it's for his best interest. You know, maybe one day I'll smell the coffee. That's why Tommy now is a multi-millionaire. You know, he's done things, he's unbeaten. It's because of me, no one else, my guidance. I said, when you stop listening to this man who's got 200 years of knowledge and know this crook game inside and out, you're off the rails. Because I'm free of charge, me, I don't take any money. I don't want any money. Because money ain't me thing, because I'll tell you why. I see it in everybody. If there's not a dollar in it, I don't want to know. It's all about the money. I'm not put them in where they shouldn't be put in just to get paid, just to get that 10%. Because the 10% means more to them than the fighter, Spencer. You know you've been a fighter. Come on. Yeah, they'll sell you out, pal, for their 10%. Don't worry about that, but John Fury won't. Like Tyson, you know, there's many things I've not liked he's done in his lifetime. I've told him straight, that's not right, that's not correct. You know, but at the end of the day, he knows who's got his back. He knows that I'm the one who will speak your utmost truth to him. You know, all the sugar hills... Everybody out there, look, they're all 10% men, I call them. They're all after the 10% of what it is. They're going to say, I don't think you can do this, I don't think you can do that. It's a business, you can't blame them. They're thinking of their own ends and they want to get a living, don't they? Fair mm. play. But it's up to you to have enough brains to see through that. And say, hang on, yeah, okay. You know, you don't move them out of that job. You don't make a friend of them. You don't do this one and that one and get close to them because they can't do the job. Because then they're not going to tell you the truth, are they? You know what I'm saying? Because they're thinking, frightened of getting sacked. That's the problem. But with me, if I'm not comfortable with it, I'm saying it. There's many times we look rough in the gym and I said, tell you what, that's not too good today, mate. What do you mean? I said, I told you. Need to improve. That's just the way it is. And those are the words of John Fury, big John Fury, uh, Spencer Farron, shout out to him. This is from the interview from Stamina for Sale. You got Tonde, you got Spencer. Uh, great channel. I'm subscribed to that channel. Um, and Big John Fury was on that particular platform today. And he mentioned a lot. Okay, there will be follow-up videos. And this is one of few. And I want to counterpunch what you heard, what we heard. John Fury say on the segment of this interview about 10% men and John's theory on befriending coaches, trainers, 10% men, the guys that just want that particular amount of money in order to keep that living going. That's why you shouldn't befriend anyone in this sport because of that particular fact. And let me counterpunch. I think it's the opposite. You know, I think that you should have a certain relationship with people like trainers. Maybe not necessarily promoters, but, you know, I, I think with everybody across the board, because at least if you do get screwed over, at least you know where it's coming from, you know, and... John Fury is, is coming from a world where he doesn't trust anybody. You can tell in the way he talks. You can tell the way he explained, uh, explained how he was when he was fighting and what type of stuff that he went through. You know, you can hear it in his voice. You can hear this raspy like uncertainty and bitterness about what happened to him and what they did to him. And when the phone stopped ringing and people that tried to get over on them, boxing is a nasty, nasty business. It's the sport that I love that I hate so much. We all know this. OK, now. Tyson Fury befriending people that he knows that he works with, I think, is the opposite of what John would prefer. John would prefer, hey, I'm going to tell my son because that's my son. I'm not going to tell him nothing wrong because I don't have a pony in the show. I'm not doing it for a from a financial uh perspective i'm not doing it for that reason i'm doing it because i love my son i'm doing it because i believe in my son and i'm doing it because i want the best for my son okay and john fury um just showed me that 
he doesn't trust anyone and he wants to spread that doctrine to his kids. And some people, it's safe. Okay, it's safe to have that type of thinking. It's safe to have that type of mindset, that mentality. But at the end of the day, at the very end of the day, okay, like he called Sugar Hill because he threw him in there. And then see, that's the only name that he threw in there. That's what raised the red flag to me. Because it's like, okay, well, wait, Sugar Hill. Guys like Sugar Hill, 10% men, that's what I call them, because they will say this, they'll say that, anything will do, anything will work. Now, him tying this in to the fact that you shouldn't trust anybody, you shouldn't be friends with anybody because they'll stab you in the back. Like he fe felt uh, Javen Sugar Hill did. I think, and this is what I believe, I believe... Javen Sugar Hill is just as so much of a friend of Tyson Fury as Tyson Fury is to him. You know, he welcomed uh, Javen Sugar Hill into his house. Javen doesn't have to get a room and do this and put himself up then wait for the check to come to pay himself back because he had to pay the overhead from doing what he needed to do. No, they had a closer relationship than that. You know, but understand something, okay? Before John Fury starts to talk about Javen Sugar Hill, he needs to remember the roots of Javen Sugar Hill. And what was the roots of Javen Sugar Hill? Emmanuel Stewart. Emmanuel Stewart was the roots of, J of Javen. That's his uncle. Okay? That's his mom or dad's brother. That's who he is. And what he learned from Emmanuel Stewart, exactly what he expected Tyson Fury to do. Okay? Come on. Listen. When uh, his cousin or their relative, um, Andy Lee, came over to be trained by Emmanuel Stewart, where the hell did he stay? He stayed with Emmanuel Stewart, for Christ's sake. He stayed with him. That's where he stayed. He didn't, he didn't go to a hotel. He didn't do, no, no, no. Emmanuel Stewart had a different type of mentality. Okay, a fighter and a trainer has a different mentality than you should, because that's that man that's going to uh, instruct you throughout your journey through a battle that may take your life or take someone else's life or drastically change your life forever. OK, so when he says and talks about Javen Sugar Hill being a 10 percent guy and how you shouldn't be uh, uh, befriend them and get close to them and all this, that and the other. He has to remember that that same guy and that same guy's blood and that same guy's uncle was the same to Tyson Fury along with other fighters that he trained, including his nephew, our cousin, Andy Lee. Counterpunch. So before John says this and wants to convey a message about Javen Sugar Hill again, because we all know where it came from. If you guys don't know where it came from, it came from the fact that Javen Sugar Hill just, um, he transparently let this be known. Look, um, I'm here to train Lawrence Acoli, Knight Tyson Fury because the fight has not been announced. When the fight gets announced, then I will train Tyson Fury. According to Tyson Fury, he was already training. He was already training from Javen Sugar Hill. Javen Sugar Hill just let everyone know that he wasn't training him. That has nothing to do with backstabbing. That has nothing to do with betrayal. That's easy. And you and here's the thing. I have more respect for Javen Sugar Hill. Not that I've lost any anyhow, but I have gained more from him by knowing what type of person he, he is. OK, and that clearly lets me know what type of person that he was trained under that he come up under a guy that had those same morals, a guy that's no longer with us. God bless the dead Emmanuel Stewart. The same guy that brought Tyson Fury in, Vladimir Klitschko in, Lennox Lewis in, and everybody else that he could, including Andy Lee in, that took care of him just like he was his own family or his own son, and Tyson Fury did the same to him, and nothing is wrong with that. But anyway, you guys tell me what you think of this first segment of John Fury explaining why you can't trust people like Javen Sugar Hill, 10% men. Of course, please subscribe, and you guys been counterpunch. Peace.